And the last guest you've heard them, I give them a warm welcome now. Marino van Zels and Hans van Dijk. <laughs> hey, let's, let's start with the introduction, because we already heard you talking, but who you are and what do you do? I'm Hans van Dijk, uh, assistant professor with tenure at the Department of Organization Studies. Welcome. Uh, and I'm Marino van Zels, uh, fourth year PhD candidate by now, also at the Department of Organization Studies. Yeah. How do you feel about the discussion so far? It, uh, because I've heard from you, I think, a lot of recognition as well. Yeah, um, and there's a lot of side comments about other issues that we think we all try to address as well. So, okay. right, the focus is on open access, but I think that there's a lot of side issues or side issues, issues related to it, and that we also try to address in our thing that we're doing. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I'm not calling names, but someone, his name is Dan, has called you revolutionaries. Do you feel revolutionary? Very much so. Very much so. I, I just like to work on my hobby, so if that's... Well, it's also, that's the same with yeah, Ronald. It, yeah, it's the same. So if that's called revolutionary, then that works for me, yeah. Yeah, sure. yeah. And, and, and in short, to, to explain what is it that you are doing? What, what is this, this hobby? Uh, yeah. uh, so, so maybe to start with, like, yeah, what are really the problems that we try to address? Um, because we've been talking here about open access and, and dependency on publishers, but we all think that that's all part of a bigger problem. Or bigger problems actually. So the first is the hyper competition that we are in, um, because uh, the current system stimulates researchers to individually try to come up with the best idea for something, while you are competing against a hundred other researchers around the world. And it would be much better if just those hundred researchers actually work together to try to address the world's problems, right? The second thing is, um, I think we have it there, yeah. So that the current scientific system, based on journals and publishing your papers, it doesn't just obstruct but also delay scientific dissemination. So we already talked about paywalls, that's an example. But at the moment, when I have a good idea, I can only bring it out in the open when it's finally published. Right? In our field, on average, for like the good journals, that's five years. So I come up with an idea to improve the world, but it takes five years before finally the world can get to know about it. Uh, right, which is a waste of time and energy and, and effort, etc. Um, so a third problem is that the current scientific system is elitist and exclusive. So we've already in part talked about it. The journals, they target academics, we focus on academic uh, discussions. So if I want to publish there or I need to publish there, um, I have to address and cater to the academics. So it's a very academic and exclusive discussion that, for example, excludes the practitioners. It makes it difficult for practitioners to be there. Um, and fourth, related to all of this, that's a broad point that has also been addressed, um, it relates to the current health epidemic that we have in science. So we know that in particular early career researchers, on average, six times as much suffer from depression and anxiety. Um, and we think that these issues, these four issues, there's many more to name, but we think yeah. these are the main ones, they're all related to each other, yeah. right? So at the moment, we try to have like, okay, this issue, we try to solve it, but then we have a patchwork solution to what we think is a systemic problem, so we need to address the systemic thing. So, our solution... There we are, it's sort of a waffle now. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, so like Hans said, we, we came up with this more radical solution that is currently way outside the normal system. Um, so, we are currently developing a new uh, publication system, um, which uh, would uh, uh, allow researchers and, and other uh, so practitioners or, or citizens um, to collaborate, so it, it focuses on the, on the yeah. stimulate collaboration um, uh, issue. Um, the second thing, and, and, and Hans mentioned that it, it, it takes our field like five years, um, but ours, our proposal says we should disseminate research immediately, uh, so immediately publish uh, uh, online. Um, and we are working together with, with Liberate Science, a Berlin-based uh, uh, organization um, that is actually developing the platform um, yeah. for this. Um, and, and that is based on peer-to-peer -peer principles, so that would be completely decentralized. We would not be in control. Everybody is in control, so that relates to the big publish yourself uh, 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 title of this event, of course. Um, and that uh, would allow the community to collectively address problems, because I think that's one of the bigger issues. Uh, now 100 individual scientists are just trying to outsmart each other, um, and I think science should be on collaboratively um, addressing these problems, scientists together with practitioners, uh, citizens that was even so citizen science was mentioned at some yeah. point yeah. Um, and you could currently the journals also force you to just publish a certain format um, I think that's that's ridiculous yeah. um, and we should change to um, an idea where you can just publish everything so not just papers but also your materials videos drawings of your papers 
individual data points, uh, if you would like. Um, I, I now understand why Dan calls you the revolutionaries. They sound like a real revolution. We're going to do things different. It's time for a change, and we are going to make change. <laughs> Have you started yet? Um, yeah, so, so Liberate Science, that's an that's organization developing the actual platform. Yeah. Um, we uh, actually published a couple of papers in, in different uh, constellations describing right. uh, this idea. Yeah. Um, so the proof of concept is basically out there. Yeah. Um, so within a year, I think we should be ready to, to actually yeah. launch and, and, yeah. and get people to publish. So the first real steps have been taken? Yeah, so Liberate Science, they got a grant of $750,000 to actually implement this. Yeah. So in the beginning, there was a paper, right, old system, the idea, and now there's the money and the resources to actually start building the system. Yeah. Um, and uh, we are working, uh, among others, with Esther there yeah. uh, on a demo version uh, to really try it out in practice yeah. and show that it works. Yeah. Huh? And, and if we're talking about the system change that we're, we also addressed today, that the system now still consists of a lot of prestige, there's a lot of money in different ways, are you, is it sort of an aim to break that, or how do you think about that, or are you collaborating with them? Um, yeah, so, well, the breaking it might be a big word, but, but yeah, system change in the end is, is really what is necessary. Um, so one of the things Hans and I did, because a lot of people ask us, you know, so, so do the, the people that are in the power to change things, do they see the problem as well? So we figured, let's just ask them, and, and so we, we wrote a paper on this. Um, and, and studied what the relationship is between time to publish. So, so Ronald talked a lot about that, like it takes too many months. Um, and we correlated that with research and dissatisfaction with the actual system. And, and the, um, uh, of course we found that the longer it takes, the, the, the more dissatisfied people get. And um, what we actually feared is if we would figure out whether there's a difference between untenured researchers and tenured um, researchers, we figured for tenured researchers, of course, it would still be negative, but obviously less than for the untenured ones. That was not even the case, so they stopped caring. So it doesn't matter for them anymore how long it takes them to publish a paper. Their satisfaction with the system just stays the same. Yeah. So the title of the paper is Comfortably Numb, after the song of Pink Floyd, and we start with the last sentences of the song, which basically is, when I was young, I used to dream, but as I've grown old, I've become comfortably numb. And right, we basically say, myself included, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm tenured. Uh, so that people like- You're tenured? I'm tenured, I have tenure, I have my permanent contract. That we become institutionalized, because the longer that you are here, the more it's like, I know, yeah, sure, the system isn't perfect, but it's the best we've got. And I think that that's the issue. We don't know about an alternative, right? It's, you need to have an alternative, you have, need to have a vision about, okay, what's, what's another future? How can we do things differently? And once that's there, Right, and you have a roadmap regarding how to get there, then yeah. we can think about different things. Yeah. I'm going to ask to the audience, Ronald, first. Yeah, well, I, I, I see your point, but there's also another coping mechanism with, uh, with the, the, the slow uh, publication uh, track. Um, and, and basically, I don't care about the published version, so I, I th once it's at the publisher, it also goes to SSRN, and I don't care. I, I need, we need to stamp off approval of the publisher, but the material is out there already on SSRN, and that's what, what matters. And, and many people around me do that, especially also the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the people that don't. Uh, if publishers want to sue me, they know where to find me. Yeah. Yeah. So in that sense, I, I don't care. I'm, I'm comfortably numb about the, the threats that are out there from, from established parties. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Um, wait for my, uh, my I mean, it's, it's an exaggeration, right? But the whole thing is, we still publish in the same way that we've been doing for 350 years. So the first academic <coughs> journal exists in 1665, right? And uh, so if you see the article, I think you're on the right, yeah. just guess what year it's from. Uh, this is 1824, and right now we still do things roughly in the same way. Well, we now have things like the internet, etc. So, right, it's, it's the 21st century. We should do things radically differently. Yeah, but not just because we're in the 21st century, but because oh. there is because of all the reasons that I mentioned yeah. before, because of all the problems that we're having, and um, right, there's so many issues to solve, and, and again, we can do it all at one, and, and each of these initiatives I applaud, and I think they're really great, and yeah. every step forward is yeah. a good thing, but at the same time, I think we the system, 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 system is called for, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I also saw a big smile on your face, Rima. Yeah, I was thinking, I wish I was comfortably numb, <laughs> um, but uh, I, I really love the way that the right science is going, and I, I hope that you guys change the game. Yeah. Yeah, and, and how big a challenge are they facing, do you think? Uh, let, let's say uh, you are an investor, you've got a lot of money, do you think, well, I'm willing to give that to those guys, or I'm going to invest it in a different thing? No, 
if I had money, you would get all my money. <laughs> yeah, how, 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 yeah, well, thank you, Mr. Big Tom. How, how hard is it to, to raise money? Uh, hard, but uh, the, the, the funny thing is, so a number of my friends, right, they're for, for good companies, make uh, good salaries, and I talk with them about this, and within five minutes, so they, they, they're they give you money of this whole system. They're like, how can we invest? How can we pay for this? And I'm like, look, you know, the whole thing is, is we want to give back, so we don't want to have an investment model where some people is an owner and they make profit out of it. No, the whole idea is that this is for everyone, so no ownership in that sense. Yeah. Saskia, how would you feel about them? And would you have any advice for them? Um, well, it's good to do this. The problem, I think, is the impact factor. As long as people are um, looked at through the impact factor of their publications, the things just won't change. And what I'd like to mention is that at NWO, they have changed uh, the rules for young academics who apply for, uh, for calls. And you only are allowed to put up three articles, and you have to put, you have to uh, describe why you put down those three articles. So there's a sort of Change, changed view on the whole impact factor thinking. But I think as long as the impact factor is there, the publishers will use it. <coughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I just that wants to, to take this. Because um, uh, the general impact factor, of course, is, is a criterion based on journals. Um, and the way we are proposing to publish uh, research output is, is completely different than journals currently do. Um, so in one of the papers we published about this, we actually suggested that because um, you publish these individual research output, like methods, uh, hypotheses, you can link them to each other. So these methods are based on these hypotheses. And then you get a network of research outputs. And then you can, so in this paper, we propose a number of different um, indicators that would evaluate that research, which is more closely connected to what we're actually trying to do. So journal impact factor is a really bad metric of quality. Um, and we're basically saying, if people are building upon your research by, by uh, going forward from hypotheses to methods, that is actually saying something about the impact of your hypotheses or methods. So we also came up with some new indicators, um, and we invite a lot of other people uh, to help us develop these indicators as well. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for that. Any other questions, remarks, things you want to know? How do you feel about this? Yes. I was trying to figure out. I think uh, because we discuss a lot the role of editors and also of publishers, but I think a good strategy could be also to get very good authors to publish in your new system. Because I think when you, like young researchers, uh, like see the best person in your field publishing in this kind of no impact factor journal, I mean, there is a lot of like idea of following in academia. So you, you see the benchmark. And I think this is exactly also the role of yeah. those people that hire uh, like top professors also to start publishing in these journals, because then if you get the highest like expertise, then you have also a great quality assurance. Okay. Yeah. If, if you want to play Champions League, you need Messi. And if you want to play Champions League, you need a top professor. Um, so on the one hand, yes, fully agree, and I fully understand the argument, and it's the whole Merton, the Matthew effect, etc. right? Um, on the other hand, if you want to do things upside down, we just want to get people involved, and we will just want to do an open invitation to everyone, like, hey, now become part of it, and, and then we'll see who follows. And, and ideally... Right. Shouldn't it be a better strategy that's maybe the suggestion to aim more at the big shot? No, we want to aim at everyone, because the whole idea is that it will be inclusive, so open to everyone. So not just like also in the Western universities, etc., but also go to second, third world countries, and there also invite not just scientists, but also practitioners, uh, citizens, etc., to, to join, to participate. Because yeah, so it would be against your own ID to have that credit. Actually, yes. Okay. Very good. Yes, over here. Over there. Yeah. So the um, uh, I I agree with your last point. By the way, it's uh, I think the, the the challenge that we're facing here is uh, developing a way of quantifying excellence, right? Because okay. that's what universities are looking for. Um, an, an alternative publishing model, sure. But uh, how can we uh, how can we recognize that something is of good quality or that someone does quality research, and once that's there, then we need a really a, a, a transformation in governance to see how we can um, uh, com uh, how how we can design a new evaluation system around that. So I would see I would say is that it's a two step system, and I probably think you have uh, an idea for that. Yeah? Yes. yes, they have. Yeah, it's a two step system. Well, the the very simple answer is read the paper of Marino and his co-author Chris Hartwig. Uh, in 2018, they published a paper which they basically explained this whole uh, new system. 
and then they elaborately explain how you can basically get quality indicators uh, in a much more proximal way than we currently do. So the whole, you know, it's ridiculous that currently still we rely so much on uh, the general impact factor, whereas the DORA agreement in 2012 already stated like, hey, let's abandon it. Uh, but we still do it because we don't have alternatives. Well, in that paper, with the system, we do have plenty of alternatives that are much more proximal, accurate, etc. Yeah. So the ideas are there, but we just need time, uh, right? We need time uh, and we need money to further get this going. And, and we need to download the paper. <laughs> um, yeah, and on top of that, so, so one of our ideas is that we have post-publication peer review. So currently, peer review is withholding you from actually getting your paper published. So we would like to reverse it and say just publish it and then afterwards invite people to review. And of course, um, you can then say, you know, is a paper or something else than a paper, something of quality, you could look at the reviews. Um, not to uh, endorse the Matthew effect again, but you could also look at who reviewed that specific output, of course. So there's many other ways in, in achieving and, and measuring excellence, if you, if you would like. Yeah. 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 Thanks. Uh, oh. Well, if I quickly may, this also gets rid of review too, right? <laughs> because rather than just having two or three reviewers and one editor that look at your paper, which we all know and probably all have experience with can be very biased or just in a bad mood or, or you know it goes against their ideas and therefore they go against it. Um, the whole idea here of the quality check is that just like any product or service that now you want to use, if you go to a city where you haven't been, you want to go to a restaurant, what do you do? You go to TripAdvisor, you go to Google Maps or whatever and you just look at the ratings of hundreds of people that have gone there before you. Well, basically here, similar kind of idea. Rather than two or three reviewers, you have like the whole site of the community that reviews. Yeah. Yeah. But now someone raises their hand and there was a uh, question there, sorry for you, because you, you want to respond to this idea. Yeah, I'm, I'm wondering um, how, like what are your concerns in the sense that how can people game this system? Yeah. Hmm. That's a good question. Yeah. Technological question. Oh, it's technological <laughs> question. <laughs> um, so it's not really a technological answer, but um, so Currently, your, your name is attached to what you output, right? So if you would publish reviews and your name is attached to the review, um, I would not uh, try to help my friends by just pu publishing positive reviews all the time because people will not take me seriously anymore. So we think in, uh, the, in the system itself, it's, it counterbalances uh, because your name is attached to everything. Um, the same as with if I sign my own reviews for journals, I become so much more careful with what I say than if it's just anonymous. And I think that just works on a big scale as well. Happy with that? Okay, I come all the way up here and, and for you as well, but you had a question first. Yes, yeah, so uh, you said that the new system also stimulates uh, collaboration, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. So are there particular strategies and methods how to do that beyond, uh, beyond the fact that we don't have to uh, outcompete each other? Um, yes. yeah. And, and specifically interdisciplinary research, I wanted to ask. Yeah, yeah. We, we all thought Ronald was impatient, but you were impatient as well. Yes, <laughs> but I'm enthusiastic and I've become just more enthusiastic. So um, at the moment, programs are working to create a system. And the first step that then we're going to do, we actually last Friday, we had a meeting about it with the project team, is we're going to run a pilot. And the pilot is going to focus on one central question that we want to address and then see, like, is this a way in which we can do science? That central question is going to be, does power corrupt? Right, which is a very simple yet age-old question, which you can address from many different disciplines. And what we then want to do is, once the system is ready, we invite researchers from the different disciplines to all collaborate and try to address that question by giving input from their own perspective and from their own discipline, and then see what happens. Right, and for us, it's like a test. It's a demo to see does this system work? Do they arrive in the end at like an answer? But it's also cool because there's all these different disciplines, so we're going to probably get not just one answer, but different answers in a way that we've never had seen in science before because each academic journal is so pillars, right? So the whole idea is it's, yes, it's aimed at collaboration because it's, it's question-based and issue-based and problem-based rather than, you know, trying to fill another gap. Um, and the idea is that it in particular tries to stimulate this cross-disciplinary collaboration. Thanks for that. Oh, something to add? Yeah, something that if you are interested in does power corrupt research, please let us know because we need collaborators. So this is an invitation to, to all of you. Wish. Great. Thanks for that invitation. Final question here in the back, sir. Um, I just wanted to ask, uh, because you said the prototype is ready, and I was just going to ask, when would the real system be ready and done? Um, what, what is your any model? Or the any model that will also be conducive to you, your group, 
the developers or the uh, initiative uh, initiators and also the authors. So, what what are your thoughts? Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? Um, yeah. Yeah, so, so we actually had a meeting last Friday, so that helps. So the, got a lot of meetings. Uh, so many meetings. Um, and um, so the idea is that in the upcoming months, the, the software developers are going to work on this. Um, then as Hans just explained, the research project will, will be the first beta test, I would say. So I, I think the, the prototype tweaked and updated should be ready year. I'm, I'm looking at Esther also here, but yeah, more or less a year, then, then we should have a running, um, Running platform. Yeah. Have you said anything, everything that you wanted to say so far here, uh, or is there something you want to add? Say to yeah, so I guess one of the other questions was like, yeah. is it for what kind of disciplines is it, right? Yeah. Or is it just for our field? The idea is really for all scientific disciplines, so and then it's also transdisciplinary yeah. in that sense. I yeah. was talking about yeah. the, the oh. any model. Hang, hang on. So we can all hear it. You were talking about any model. I'm uh, talking about the any model. Yeah. How how do you end from it, and how do uh, the authors? And from it as well. How do they end from it? Yeah, how do they make money? Okay. Uh, yeah, 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 the money. And, and there was a, a question from you as well? Or yeah, how are you going to um, uh, categorize? I mean, is there like um, a community that, uh, okay, I'm a linguist and you are organizational mm -hmm. sciences? Yeah. yeah? And am I going to upload the first uh, article ever in linguistics and then I decide this is a category that is going to work, but if you are a social linguist, I don't want you in my uh, category. So yeah. how is this going to work? Yeah. And uh, is it collaborative? Yeah. Do you know? yeah. Yeah. Two final questions. Yeah, yeah, so I'll be very short because so I think we want to go to the drinks. Yeah. Uh, regarding the money question, still trying to figure it out. Ideally, all of this is subsidized publicly so that we don't need to worry about money. Um, so the timeline also, the more money comes in, the sooner we can get everything ready and done, etc. Regarding the categories, that's also something that's still being worked on, but the idea is that it's more a bottom-up approach, right? So if you feel like, hey, this doesn't really suit me, I want to do something else, right? It, it's a platform for you that you can yourself also develop and use. If there's a prize for the fastest talking scientist, you will probably win it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, so uh, like your question before, do you want to say anything um, as a conclusion? I think everybody should be on that side by yeah. now, right? Um, but a lot of the questions also came from, you know, this is difficult, this is new to me. Um, so I think find support by, by the open science community. Um, and I was just talking to Rima and Nea, we're starting the reproducibility club in January. Yeah. So if you need practical help with your questions, yeah, then please join us and uh, yeah, let's have fun. And drink. And drink. Thank you very much, Marino and Hans. You get a big round of applause, Rima.